Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala. I'm president of Audioholics, and today we have Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. How are you today, Gene? Good as always, my friend. Good as always. I hope you're ready to open up some kind of worms today. We're going to open a Pandora's box today, folks. <laughs> We're going to be talking about amplifiers and whether they sound the same or not. Oh, yeah. We have a uh -oh. holy war going out there, <laughs> and we're ready to go right into it. No so, doubt, no doubt. Uh, for, first of all, before we go there, you know, why don't you go ahead and share with everybody this great point system that you just came up with in terms of uh, amplifiers? Yeah, you know, I was I was um, sitting down one night uh, thinking about how people decide whether or not they need an external power amp when they're running an AV receiver. And I'm thinking to myself, there's got to be a few conditions that, you know, would be qualifiers, yep. if you will. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and I thought about, well, really, how much power you need depends on three or four factors, okay? Mm -hmm. Depends on, number one, how big your room is. Yeah. Number two, what kind of loudspeakers you're using. Number three, your listening habits, how loud you listen. Yeah. And number four... Source material, how dynamic the program material is, you know, and, uh, nice. and then there's a little like 4A, if you will, called bass management. And if you're bass managing a speaker or not bass managing a speaker, obviously, if you're not bass managing a speaker and you're asking the amplifier to deliver full frequency response down to 20 hertz or sometimes lower, you're going to suck a lot of amplifier power sure. to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's going to load the amplifier even more. So we came up with this point system, basically, that, that asks you how loud you listen, the impedance of your speakers, the sensitivity of your speakers, and it's in the article that's embedded uh, here in mm -hmm. this video. And um, if you score it above a four, then you're probably a good candidate for getting external amplification. Yeah. And even if the external amplifier is not much more powerful than the receiver you have, there's still merit to it for several reasons. There's merit, number one, because external amplification, like these amplifiers here, they have their own power supply just to run those channels, and they typically could drive a low impeded speaker better than a receiver amplifier that's trying to run seven or sure. up to nine channels sometimes, okay? Mm -hmm. And also, you're freeing up power, mm -hmm. you know? If your receiver is gonna be taxed to deliver full range for the front speakers, you take that load away now, the receiver is, is resting for that, it's allowing this common power supply to handle the other speakers. Right. You're freeing it up, and you're doing the heavy-duty lifting on that external amplifier. So that could give you more headroom, and it can improve the sound. I mean, I know pe there are people that think all amplifiers sound the same. It's the same kind of people that also think that price doesn't matter with speakers, that a $200 speaker is as good as a $20,000 speaker. <laughs> no, what <And> we have seen. <laughs> I don't want to go there because <laughs> I don't believe in that. I do believe that well-engineered systems price does matter and the more you go up in price yeah you do get diminishing returns to some extent but you mm -hmm. also get better engineering you get products that can play louder cleaner deeper and uh yeah there's merit to that hugo oh, absolutely especially for for guys like us who are always and that's the engineering side of us we're always looking for the perfection of things you know yeah and you know i'm all about over designing rather than trying to design to be the cheapest or design to be the minimal best i don't believe in the similarly good minimal best right. nonsense so um you know you asked me about whether or not amplifiers all sound the same right i say yes and no <laughs> there you go that's the answer people i yes say no i say i say yes for the people that think that all amplifiers sound the same because it'll make them happy yeah, and I not? say no for the audiophiles that want a little bit more performance or they have certain listening requirements and listening conditions that qualify better amplifiers. Absolutely. And, you know, the argument, in all, in all honesty, there's people out there that say as long as you don't drive an amplifier past its linearity, they'll all sound the same. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my return to that is to say, well, how do you know whether you're not you're driving the amplifier beyond its linearity? Right. Because amplifier tests are done into a resistive load using a sine wave sweep, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are very known quantities, very controlled quantities. Well, when you're dealing with a real loudspeaker, you know, loudspeaker is not a resistor. It's an impedance. It's a complex impedance that changes with frequency. And some speakers are harder to drive than others. Some speakers have, even if it's an 8-ohm rated speaker, 
there's really not a standard in rating speaker impedance. A manufacturer can be very loose about their ratings. Right. So we've measured 8-ohm speakers that have a dip of 2 ohms in the low bass range or even in the upper bass range. Mm -hmm. and what does that do to an amplifier? That sucks life out of amplifiers that don't have adequate power Absolutely. supplies or okay. adequate output capability from their transistors. So you get a speaker that's moderately efficient with a low impedance with various impedance uh, dips and peaks. Mm -hmm. And if the amplifier itself, like one of these amplifiers, if the amplifier itself has a high output impedance or it's not extremely low output impedance, then that could change the frequency response and change the sound. Right. So here's the problem with the people that believe all amplifiers sound the same. It's usually the people that don't have a lot of experience designing, first of all. It's the people that may look at a textbook and say, well, the ideal amplifier should have a zero output impedance, infinite input impedance, no distortion, no noise. Well, show me one. Show me the money. <laughs> exactly. Because I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an ideal condition amplifier. Yes. Does not exist. Doesn't exist. Even even if you spend 20 grand on an amplifier, it's not it's never going to be a perfect voltage mm -hmm. source. You're never going to get an amplifier that truly doubles down with having load impedance because you get to the point where you're going to get to an ohm or half an ohm and you're going to be current limiting. Right. And most receiver amplifiers current limit. They will not double down in four ohms. They just can't do it. They have all these other things going inside of a common box that they can't supply enough current to get you that kind of power. Exactly. Well, I think that pretty much uh, covers that subject, you know. It does. And, you know, if I, if I may give you some anecdotal experiences mm -hmm. with amplifier listening tests, we've done many amplifier listening tests. We've done them blind. For the people that love blind tests, yes, we've done them sighted. Mm -hmm. Sighted meaning you could see the amp, but you couldn't really tell which amp was playing. Mm -hmm. And we found some interesting results. You know, we've had even at normal levels, on a big speaker like the ones we have, our reference speakers, the Status Towers. Those are a very demanding speaker. They're very revealing speaker, in an acoustically controlled room. We've done comparison tests between Class D amplifiers linear amplifiers, AB amplifiers, and people have been able to identify preferences, you know, mostly in the bass range. It's, it's pretty amazing. And there's been times where I couldn't really explain it because I measured the amplifiers and they both were high power amplifiers. Um, maybe the amplifier that people preferred had a little bit lower output impedance, maybe had a little bit lower distortion. So, you know, it's hard to say, it's hard to quantify at what level of distortion is audible or how low the output impedance needs to be, because it really depends on the interaction of yeah. the components. Yeah, it's the interaction of the components, and there's also, of course, a, a level of personal preference involved as well when it comes to the listening experience. Absolutely. And those are things, of course, that we cannot quantify as engineers. No, you know? and you know... We're not robots. <laughs> we're not robots, certainly. And, you know, there are a lot of amplifiers that could sound similarly good, if you want to use that term, if you, mm -hmm. if you don't mind me using mm -hmm. it in this case. There are situations where you get a really kick-butt amplifier here and a really kick-butt amplifier here from competitors, and they're both designed with similar aspects mm -hmm. with output capabilities, noise and everything, and they can sound similar and they sound more similar than separate speakers would sound yeah. similar, okay? Much easier for an amplifier to sound similar than a loudspeaker, different loudspeaker to sound similar. And yes, there is truth to that, but there is also truth to the fact that amplifiers can and do sound differently. They measure differently, therefore they can sound differently. Absolutely. And that you know, I that's think that, it. that pretty much drives the nail on the coffin, no? Well, it does for me, at least. I'm, I'm content with that. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I've been testing amplifiers for 15 years, and, and I've been quite surprised at the results that don't always bench the way they sound. And I guess the only thing that's left to say is I, we'd like to hear everybody else's opinion that is watching this video. If you're on YouTube watching this video, let us know if you think if all amplifiers sound the same. And if you're on the AudioHawks forum, Come there and do the same. You know, you're welcome to have a spirited debate, share your experiences, and keep it civil if you can. Yes, uh, please. You know, and, uh, <laughs> Otherwise, you get to take a week's vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that has been known to happen before. <laughs> but uh, that's that's great. And along those lines, Gene, I want to invite everybody to go ahead and visit audioholics.com for tons of great reviews and awesome articles that completely shatter the tons of myth 
that are running out there in the audio industry. And I'd lo also like to invite people to go ahead and sign up to our weekly newsletter so that they get the latest updates on the site. And as a gift, they also get the top 2014 AV uh, guide, okay, of products. So can you go ahead and talk about this a little bit? Absolutely, Hugo. Basically what we did was we did a market assessment of all the products out there this year, and uh, many of which we've reviewed. And we looked at certain price points, you know, between low to mid price points of products that we thought stood out mm -hmm. either because they measured well, they sounded well, or they had features that other products in the similar category didn't have. Mm -hmm. And we have receivers in there, loudspeakers, subwoofers, Blu-ray players, you name it. There's a gamut of products there for you to look at. And it's a good guide, you know, it's, you know, it's a good reference and we hope you enjoy it. Makes for a nice Christmas list. Uh, for those of you that are really into audio and you can go ahead and print it out and take it to the store actually absolutely it's never too early to shop absolutely awesome with that said thank you so much for listening share your thoughts down there share this video also with your friends take like share it on facebook twitter google plus and everywhere else out there anyways thanks so much thank and you. until next time keep, keep listening, listening.